really grateful and, and glad that we have now one year after the pandemic um, had started a several effective vaccines available and already approved uh, in Europe. And this is a great achievement of uh, translational and clinical research um, to get in this short period of time, although it seemed so long for all of us, um, this output that we have now the possibility um, to vaccinate um, uh, the people all over uh, the world and, and here in Europe after approval of um, the vaccines, um, now four vaccines by the European uh, Medical Agency. The principle of showing that a vaccine um, is effective is that you uh, vaccinate against placebo a population and then you see under the daily circumstances of this specific population um, how many infections you can uh, document and how severe those infections are. And this is the principle the vaccines were based on. Due to the shortness of time, the vaccines were evaluated in uh, healthy volunteers. And uh, those um, persons were not necessarily patients. Regarding the study population, we have to claim uh, that only a minority of patients, for example, 3% of those uh, who were vaccinated in the first BioNTech-Pfizer trial had a cancer history. However, we have a lot of experience uh, for vaccination in cancer and especially in myeloma patients. And we know uh, that myeloma leads to an immunosuppression and that the probability um, of severe infections per se is higher than in non-myeloma affected patients. And we know very well how effective pneumococcal and influenza vaccinations are for myeloma patients and how important. We know that in immunosuppressed patients, also in myeloma patients, there are sometimes infections despite the vaccination. However, for influenza, for example, we know that those infections then have a milder course normally and can, um, the, so that the vaccine cannot prevent from being infected, but can prevent effectively still for having a severe disease course um, for the need of mechanical ventilation and so on. And we translate this experience very clearly to the now available COVID vaccines. The International Myeloma Society, the International Myeloma Working Group, the European Hematological Association, and all country-specific hematologic and, and oncology um, associations clearly stated a yes for all myeloma patients being vaccinated against COVID. And this is a clear yes, and a clear yes for all approved vaccines. The vaccines approved are different, different in the basis. We have two mRNA vaccines, the uh, BioNTech-Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine. And we have two protein-based vaccinations, the AstraZeneca and the Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine. Um, all have advantages and probably also disadvantage, but they all are very effective in protecting from infection, from being infectious, and especially um, having a severe um, disease course, so with the need of uh, intensive care 
um, uh, or mechanical ventilation or even alternatively that COVID is leading to death. We know that myeloma patients have a higher risk for severe COVID in infections and uh, disease courses, and uh, that this accounts especially for patients with a very active myeloma disease. So that our clear recommendation is that any single myeloma patient should receive as soon as possible and as soon as it is available for each individual a patient, a vaccination against COVID, and we recommend any single approved vaccine. And we hope that the infrastructures will be providing the vaccine now very, very fast to our patients at need.